All right. Um, take dose. Dose takes for this one. Architecture 530, environmental systems. This is lecture nine. Sound isolation. Oh, man. I always shut myself off. I'm still Jason. I'm still here. Um, here talking about acoustics. Good morning, afternoon, good evening, good night. Hope you had a good brunch. Hope you're going to have a good lunch. Hope you had a good lunch. Hope your last dinner was good. Hope all of the things. Hope you're in a good spot. You're ready to learn about some sound isolation. Isolate your roommates from yourself. Um, get some quiet time. It's always a good um, aspect. So remember when we're at attenuating dB, we can increase the distance, add a barrier, decrease the level. Um, so we looked at decreasing the level in the in the space. So if we go back and look at that, um, what we did when we were looking at background noise, we're looking at these two paths. Path of the ductwork, path of the diffuser, what these two paths. Now we've added a barrier. Um, we might be able to consider this barrier, but we don't really know what it is. It's not the same color, so um, it's the same thickness. We don't know if it's the same density, though. So we don't know if it's equal to the under slab. We don't know what's up here. So right now we're just going to look at this barrier. We're going to add this barrier. Um, if we open this room up and just put this mechanical equipment in this space, it'll be too loud. Um, that should be common sense on there. So we need to add a barrier. We need to figure out what that is and how we quantify that. So um, when we're adding a barrier, we've got to look at all three paths. Um, so we're going to switch diagrams. And we've got airborne sound here. Um, so this is our source. This is our receiver. Um, our source is going to be air handling unit, some sort of mechanical equipment. And we have transmission through the wall, up and above, down and below. This is usually the detail, the up and above, when your wall does not go all the way to structure above and is not resiliently sealed. Um, this is usually the flanking path. If your piece of equipment is just setting um, directly on the slab, you can have vibration um, through here um, and flank on that path. So if this is a nice thick eight inches of concrete to block out the noise that is in this room from the from what we want background level in this room. Um, this eight inches of concrete, this connection detail down here has to be the same. This cannot be some um, pressed timber um, construction that is half the density and half the dimension of what your wall is. Otherwise, you're just gonna get around. Likewise, you can't take your big thick concrete wall Take it up here and then just put an acoustical drop ceiling up here because then you're going to get noise going there. So we've got to look at wall construction or ceiling construction, wall construction, and floor construction. In this instance, um, 520, we look at all three. We run through all of those. Um, in this instance, we're just going to look at wall construction and we're going to use the diagram that we've seen before 100 dB source room, um, 55 dB on the other side. So this has got a uh, attenuation of 45 dB. This is our goal um, on here. So 100 dB on this side, we can live with 55 dB on this side. Remember the problem with the uh, single number descriptors? We don't know what that sounds like. Uh, most likely this is 55 around 125 or 250 in this case. Um, if this is 55 at 4K, we've got big problems. It means our NC on the other side is around 60. We don't want that. That's way too loud. So this is the example we're going to use. Um, and, and the thought process here is I've got to put a barrier. I'm going to assume that my floor is good. I'm going to assume that the ceiling is good. And I need to pick out this barrier here to go from 100 to 55. So if we look at a typical um, stud with 5 eighths chip on each side, um, you're around a sound transmission class of 36. It's about as high as you can get. I usually use 32, 34. Um, you start to split hairs a little bit, but I, I kind of err on the side that um, the installation is not critical. The uh, installer is not familiar with acoustical concepts, so they're not going to resiliently seal with acoustical sealant at the top and bottom properly. And remember, if you leave a gap of an inch and 10 feet, 
uh, square feet, you've basically created an open window. You basically short circuited this. So I would drop this down a little bit. Um, if we add some mass to it, that does help us, but not as much as we would think. Um, this would be similar. You would get the same. You would get a similar effect is if you um, put this insulation on the outside and actually knock down the reverberation time on this side. It's about equivalent. So if you take this insulation, put it in on the outside, you uh, you uh, reduce the reverberation time in this room, which may or may not be a good thing. So you, by moving this out, you can kill two birds with one stone. But you're only gaining about. Um, um, 3 dB of attenuation on here. And so if we go back and we look at this aspect, um, we're not absorbing much on this side either because we're moving the insulation to this 55 side. We're improving the um, reverberation time on this side. Um, if you would um, put absorption on all these surfaces in this room, um, you could maybe knock down your source um, 3 to 6 dB. Um, so it's better to kind of throw it over here on this side and make your receiver room better. Um, if we go up to similar construction as um, our STC39 wall, but we add resilient channels here. Um, and you're probably probably wondering what resilient channels are. I don't have a, a sweet slide for that, but we can... Not acoustic, acoustic. Let's see what the old uh, what the old Google shows us. Oh yeah, thanks Google. It worked this time. Let's go look at some images. Where was that sweet one at? Um, if we're in the lab, I'd be able to show you. Let's cycle through some of these these photos. Here's kind of a good one here. Um, resilient channels. So uh, let me turn on my my uh, camera. Let me make it a little bit bigger down here. So essentially what you have is this channel here runs across. Um, you uh, affix that. Oh, you can't, can't. Oh, yeah. So the channel runs across here. You affix that to the studs, and then you nail or fasten the gypsum to those channels. So you're essentially... Um, you're attaching here this is against the, the stud so let's say this is my stud wall and then you're attaching your channel here so as the sound um, hits this gypsum side it's moving on that channel and it's not moving on your on your stud side and therefore it cuts down the transmission um, to the other side uh, we've got some that's a better this one kind of looks oh, it's too small. So this is a resilient, um, uh, which is kind of hard to see, uh, attachment to the stud, and then you slide this channel over. There was actually a bigger picture of that. This, So we've got this clip here. This um, Lego-looking side, actually neoprene, neoprene rubber, um, affixes to the stud, and then you slide this channel in. The resilient channel that I was talking about, um, this portion, this side here, is nailed to the stud, and then you attach your gypsum here, and that gives you a little bit of flex, a little bit of resiliency. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a resilient channel. Again, we go over more of this in 520. Um, so by... So by adding a resilient channel to our already existing wall, um, we get to STC 50. Um, now, now we're now we're talking. Remember, we wanted 45, wanted 45 um, reduction here, um, and STC. That's that's a laboratory measurement. That's the best you're gonna get. That's the best of the best. So that would be who would be considered the best man? There's no baseball going on, so I don't know what's going on um yeah michael jordan best of the best that wasn't too long ago the last dance though i was a rodman guy i liked rodman he could play some ball but um this is it this is the highest level that you're gonna get i knocked 5 db off of that um so that gets us to our 45 um if we needed an stc 58 wall now we're talking about a double stud wall 
um, with an air gap in between it. Right, much larger wall, much more substantial construction. This is significantly more expensive than this one. This one isn't too bad, but you do have a labor intensity on this other side of doing those resilient channels. But it's a much better wall than not having them. Um, what are our limitations of adding a barrier? We've got space, cost, and then it's dependent on installation. Um, by adding this barrier here, um, you can see that we can only get to, um, if we're at 100, um, I thought that slide was right there. If we're at 100, then we can only get to 45, right? We don't have enough room. Um, this space right here, we can't do a double stud wall. We've got to go back now and decrease that level on this side. We've got to decrease what this, this noise is. We've got to change this. Or we move this back, right? We, we move it on the other side of a corridor, run it over here, and now we've got a corridor running over here, and now we've got two walls that this has got to go through we don't need a um, 58 or 60 stc wall um, on there so th the, that's what you want to plan around when you're taking your noise producing spaces and your acoustic sensitive spaces put those spaces that are um, um, transitional spaces or they're not really critical acoustic spaces put those in between increase that distance um, why do we want to attenuate this noise? Um, gives us better acoustics on there. Um, so if you remember looking through or watching this video, um, you can go back and revisit it. Um, as we decrease that background noise, um, the lecture becomes clearer. It's very clear. It's the clearest is lowest background noise, highest STC, um, and then lowest reverberation time, which makes sense, right? We've got more of the direct sound. But the STC from 20 to 45, if um, we moved this barrier over to here um, and it switched over to NC30 background and we went to a dead room, you would definitely hear that bouncing ball on there. So we've got to we've got to track these with each other. We can't have a really high STC and then a bunch of noise in the room. We can't have um, low noise in the room. Um, a lot of STC, so we were blocking noise from coming into the room from other spaces, and a high reverberation. Then we're we're destroying what our our message is in there. Um, <clears throat> so one thing that we've we've left out of this um, since we've left reverberation time is the architectural acoustics um, portion of this. So we've got increasing the distance, we've got adding a barrier, decreasing the level, and then what we're doing architectural acoustics wise. <clears throat> increasing the distance, that's our friend. That's, that's the easiest thing to do first, um, especially early on. Um, claim your space, keep things away from you. Um, if we were doing a design for a uh, concert hall, on the plan, I would draw a uh, big thick line that I would call a acoustic isolation joint. And basically, if you're gonna cross that line, so I draw a big black line around this, or blue or red, maybe red to say stay away. Um, and if you're going to penetrate that line right here, you're going to have to do specialty construction. And that kind of forces them away. That way they're not Swiss cheesing that. If this is not a good ceiling in my actual um, acoustic isolation, construction is around this area and you punch through here that means you've got to do something on this side so this noise level doesn't break through the duct and then back out of there um, so increasing that distance is move this noise away from it adding a barrier um, as we looked at depending what your STC level is um, a standard wall can probably block a ringing phone probably probably not going to block the uh, the bass guitar aspect. And this is why um, if you go to a movie theater, a quiet space is one of the, well, yeah, is one of the, uh, not quiet space, quiet place, one of the best movies because right next to it um, when it was out was Rampage. And I'm pretty sure I heard the entire dialogue of Rampage. Um, and that's due to the barrier. And the issue with that was it was not sealed up at the top and you could just had a direct line of what was going on in the other theater. Um, 
and you can definitely hear the explosions. But the other aspect is if you can hear your neighbor, you can't really understand what they're doing, but you hear every explosion that they have um, or every uh, EDM beat that drops, um, you hear it. That's the issue because it can block out those trebles, those highs, but it lets those lows through. So we can increase the distance and add a barrier. That's the most efficient way. Um, so when we're adding a barrier, we want to make sure we know what we're adding it for, what we're trying to block out. This is why that single number integer or that single number descriptor, um, I don't know why I keep calling it integer, um, single number descriptor um, is kind of misleading because we don't know. This could be STC 40 for this wall, but we're, you can see in this illustration um, the the sound is not getting through the wall. It is getting through the wall in this. Same STC. These could be the same level. Um, it's not that the bass guitar is louder. It's that it's a different frequency and that wall does not see it. It's basically like it's not there. The other way to look at it is adding acoustic panels on one side um, to our barrier. What this does is it makes um, one of the rooms quieter but your only maximum that you can get by doing um, an acoustic panel or doing um, some absorption on one side is decreasing the level by, if it's in the source space, you could decrease it by 6 dB maximum. If it's on the um, receiving space, it's going to decrease it by 3 dB maximum. So it's a trick that you can use. But if you have a lot of mechanical room and a noise, putting a bunch of fuzz on the wall will not fix that. So let's look at architectural acoustics and, and what we can do. Um, we can look at our wall and we can change the shape of the wall. If we add some diffusion, add some more mass to the other side, we get two things out of this. We don't get a hard reflection off of this. We don't have an angle of incidence. So let's say this is concrete um, on here. Um, and we can kick that sound out. We might need that. If this is a kitchen, this is probably not a good option of kicking that um, sound back into the kitchen. The kitchen's already loud. We probably want to do something more of absorption of it hits the surface. Sound is transmitted through um, to another space, and then just a little bit is reflected back. Where this is good is a performance hall or a drama theater um, where the helpful or the energy in the space, you want to save all that acoustic energy, and you want to get it back, but you don't want to have discrete reflections um, there. Um, going back to when we talked about reverberation, adding um, absorption or acoustic panel on the wall, we need to be mindful of what happens on the other side, what happens to this. So if we say this is a 0.6 um, NRC, meaning that we're uh, uh, absorbing 60% of the sound. If this is a highly concrete or a highly reflective concrete or marble wall, we're going to have... 60% of that 40% um, that got through coming back through. So we've got some more coming in here. Um, so we need to be mindful that that um, it could be helpful with that. That helps us with that envelopment aspect. Um, and then we can uh, decrease what that level is um, on the other side. So if we decrease this level, we properly treat this room. Um, we add an appropriate barrier or two by making this a hallway and increase this distance, then we can start to um, solve the problems that we were looking at um, back in the uh, previous lecture. Um, when we were looking at the, uh, the background noise. So increase this distance, that's number one. Add a barrier, that's number two. If those two don't work, we need to um, decrease this level with what we're proposing in the design, and then we go in and fix the architectural acoustics. We do not fix the architectural acoustics first if and work our way backwards, so we wanna be mindful of that. So that's our sound isolation. It takes care of these three paths with isolation, and the background noise takes care of these three paths. And so our next one, we're gonna do actual um, um, sound isolation calculation um, for a given problem and then um, we'll finish up with a background noise calculation um, a full path
full simplified path. It's not a full full analysis of a mechanical system. But all right. Thank you and good day. Alex.